Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video showcasing more of Pico CTF 2022 Capture the Flag. I'm over here on my Kali Linux virtual machine. I'm inside of a Kali Linux uh, Z shell prompt the command line uh, and I'm over here on the Pico CTF PicoCTF.org website inside the Pico CTF 2022 challenge competition. We are on page four and hopefully getting to the end of it super duper soon but we're moving back into the binary exploitation category for a new challenge called Flag Leak. We can open this up. It does require a instance started on demand. So let's go ahead and launch the instance. It says the description is storytelling class one of two. I'm just copying and pasting with this program. What can go wrong? You can view the source here and connect with using the remote connection command here. So let's go ahead and download these and play with it. I'm going to change directory into my binary exploitation directory and we'll create a new folder called flag leak in which case we can w get this down uh, and we can grab the source code just as well. And let's open this up. Take a look at that source code in vuln.c. Here we go. Regular uh, C includes uh, usual preprocessor definitions for constant values like the buff size and flag size, and of course a read flag function. And then we also have the vulnerable function defined here. We have a character flag defined with the buff size uh, character array and a story. We read the flag and it ends up being returned and spat into the uh, flag variable, the buffer allocated for it. And it says, hey, please tell me a story and I'll tell you one. We scan F, which is our own input, looks like 127 character bytes string. I'm gonna assume with that percent sign here uh, and that's going to end up being put in our story right our story is a buffer allocated with 128 bytes so the last one could very well be a new line or excuse me a null byte then it says here's the story and we have printf uh, with story passed into it now we have the int main function of course set this all together and run the vulnerable function okay so there is a gimmick here uh, to note. We are going to end up seeing a flaw with uh, format strings being used and being present here. Uh, so if I actually take a look at the uh, C printf function, um, and again, maybe we might be able to get a man page for that. I'll zoom in, here we go. This is simple, right? This seems kind of boring. John, why the heck are you looking at the printf man page? I know, look, this just outputs stuff to the screen, but it will format it in one specific way. Uh, this ends up using format specifiers with sort of these percent %s or percent %d or percent %x uh, variables and, and notes inside of uh, another string or the original first argument, right? This is actually kind of an interesting gimmick. Format string is a character string beginning and ending with its initial shift state, if any. Format string is composed of zero or more directives, ordinary characters, not percent, which are copied on change the output stream and the conversion specifications, which results in fetching zero or more subsequent arguments. Now this is an interesting gimmick here. It tries to receive it based off of arguments that are passed in to the function here. Each conversion specification is introduced by the character percent sign and ends with a conversion specifier. In between, there may be in this order zero or more flags, an optional minimum field width, an optional precision, and an optional length modifier. It makes a whole lot of noise here, but it actually has some kind of neat and interesting gimmicks where you could climb up to different specific things rather than saying, hey, I wanted this get the first argument on the stack. I actually want to go grab the second argument on the stack or the third or the fourth or fifth or a hundredth. It really can be anything that you'd like. Uh, argument to the function. However, there's a strange predicament where if that argument is not actually provided within the function call, then there could be a problem. I'm trying to scroll down to see if this actually covers it. Looks like it gets into all these different format specifiers. Um, do, 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 do. Does it discuss it? Uh, here we go, here we go, here it is. Code such as printf foo based on a variable might indicate a bug and actually often indicates a bug since foo may contain even hey the string argument that's passed in here might contain a percent sign for another conversion specifier if foo comes from untrusted user input 
And if this doesn't have any other arguments to it, then it's not going to read it from what's provided in the function. It'll read it off of the stack and maybe be able to climb up different fields, uh, different pieces and allocation slots in memory. We might be able to go retrieve some information. And even things like percent %n, uh, one of those weird format specifiers even allows you to write memory. So simply having printf used with a user provided input and no arguments, this is a very, very dangerous thing. And a format vulnerability, a format string or printf vulnerability basically allows arbitrary read and arbitrary write in some scenarios, right? So we know, okay, we might be able to actually beat this thing up then. If the flag is on the stack, we could very well retrieve what that flag value might be just by playing with this application and trying to give it percents, <laughs> percent signs and format specifiers. So what I'll do is I'll mark the vulnerable application executable and I'll try and run it. Now this needs its own flag. So, oh, I saw it there. I saw a John, please subscribe. Put that in our usual flag.txt. And when we run vuln, it says, hey, tell me a story and I'll tell you one. We could use something like percent %x. Now, while I could have normally just entered something like please subscribe, it would end up displaying that. I guess it's truncating it on strings or uh, space characters, uh, whatever. But percent %x gives us an interesting different result where it's not just that original string echoed and displayed back out to us. It's going to be a hexadecimal value for something present in memory. Uh, so, okay, if we can't specify space characters, right, I'm not going to get anything more following that. We could maybe just add a delimiter with a period. Will that work? There we go. Now we can see some things being displayed here. Um, and these are a bit interesting, right? Because, well, it, they look like memory addresses because they are. However, some of them might start to repeat themselves. If I were to keep adding percent %x, percent %x, percent %x, percent %x, uh, I'll add a period there and copy and paste that just a bit more. You'll notice we have 252E7825, 7825E7825, e et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this seems to keep going for some time. Uh, what is that? What is that value? Is that something that's interesting for some reason? We could use pwn tools, right? We know that's packed data. So if we wanted to use something like pwn p32, could we determine what that might have been while it was hex? Turns out it is our percent %x characters. It is our input. Printf is going to find the buffer that it's putting itself into on the stack as part of the stack, which could lead to some kind of very interesting and very weaponized uh, exploitation opportunities, right? With that said, we know we have 128 bytes in this buffer, and then we slowly start to climb up to the flag on its own. Hmm. That might be something interesting, because we could probably just find out, okay, where is the flag going to end up being? Where could we leak up to the flag by sending more and more data to it? We very well could. Uh, and let's do that super duper quick. Let's try to send, oh, percent %x, percent %x, percent %x, percent %x, over and over and over again. Blah, 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 blah. 128 things, right? Oh. I see where it shifts. I see where it changes to a 6E, 6E, 68, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then all the way up to a one on its own, which is odd. Maybe that's going to be the end of something. Uh, what I could do in that case is get back into Python and then import pwn yet again. Let's do, here's that big long string, right? Let's try and split it on the periods that we were just using. And then let's, hmm, what should we do? Maybe consider these all as hex. I'm gonna do a list comprehension, right? I'm gonna do four x in. And we'll consider these all base 16 because they are hex, right? Now that it's a number, we can go up and head and pass that to pwn p32 
and there is our flag. It's granted it's kind of joined together in a strange way, right? If we wanted to mix these, it says, hey, John, please subscribe. There's our flag. There is our local flag and our new line character. And that is how we would solve that challenge in sort of a manual way, right? We were able to read that data just by climbing up over and over and over again. Granted, maybe that's annoying and frustrating because ultimately this was a string variable that it retrieved, right? Could we use something like percent %s rather than percent %x over and over and over again? Excuse me. Let's try percent %s, percent %s. No issues yet. I'll keep trying to send more of these. Ooh, one of those broke. Probably because one of those couldn't really be represented as a string and it might have just had a problem. Well, if we could use something like one of those format specifiers, those length specifiers, could we actually specify, look, I want to know the value at not just the first position based off of an X or an S and then slowly climb up as more provided. Could I say, hey, I want the second one or the third or the fourth or the fifth, etc. Those will actually follow the percent sign and then you add a dollar sign and then the format specifier that you want. So while I could have done that with percent five, dollar sign x let's try it as an s Ooh, that one broke okay let's try and run that one more time with maybe something like uh i don't know 10 will we get lucky yeah okay cool that one was able to be rendered and returned as a string but there's no good data there so that's not all that useful but what if we could do something like use our script use our own program as we did before to like oh Remember when we were working in the previous buffer overflow video where we looped through operations uh, interacting with our target? Let's copy it. Let's work with our exploit.py file and then let's take our vulnerable function and we don't need to work with the canary values this time, blah, blah, blah. We don't need a big long loop of stuff, but hey, let's actually maybe remove and clean a whole lot of this. I'm gonna remove that last iteration I'm gonna no longer use a while loop because we're not using a canary anymore. We don't even need a new instruction pointer. We're just gonna try and send data to the application. So let me move all this in an indent. Let's send it percent and then a number, right? Hey, what index we might wanna climb up through and start to count or move our way up through all the data here. Let's try it. Let's use the, uh, I guess a string for our number here. How did we do that previously? We just did a character. Oh, that should be a legitimate character in that case. So a string of our byte. And I guess we can say like I, because we are counting this time. We don't need our own local testing canary blog. Um, we could end up trying to add in a dollar sign s and it writes a payload over and over again maybe we don't need to do that uh, we don't need to actually re read or send anything or determine what our payload size is we just kind of want to send it and see what happens uh, let's wait until we are receiving our own greater than greater than space as our prompt and then we send the line for our payload we don't need to send the payload size anymore but let's see if we get any data back. Yeah? Let's print out the response that we might see as we loop through this 100 or 200 times. Don't need an offset. Don't need a counter uh, uh, other than a for loop to try and iterate through. A percent sign, dollar sign S, to indicate, hey, let's climb up first one two, three, all the things on the stack that we might be able to receive as a string. Some of them might crash, right? Some of them might just break. But let's see if we get, oh, can't concatenate string to bytes. Totally forgot a B prefix here and totally forgot to encode this as UTF-8. Okay. How about now? Let's run that again. 
uh, what's it doing? Are we receiving? Oh, we must have had an extra receive until here. Because we ran a receive line before our receive until. Let's try that. Here's a story. Percent one dollar sign S. And some of these got an error because it is going to end up displaying real raw bytes. So rather than using UTF-8, let's use Latin 1 as an encoding scheme. Try that again. Blah, 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 blah. Ooh, you might have saw some interesting stuff up there, even as we were carving through it. Some of these didn't return anything. Some of these returned null. Some of these actually got what looked like interesting variables and values, like, oh, our current directory. Uh, parts of the binary itself, like the ELF format header. It's crazy weird. Oh, you can even see like the colors that it might have retrieved from our environment variables. That's kind of wild. And here it is. Here, here are our environment variables. Old pass or PWD, old present working directory, my present working directory. <laughs> All of this just being churned out and displayed from our program because it's reading it through the memory of the binary of the actual application. Now, one of these will have our flag in it, right? We might not be able to find where right away just by scrolling through it, but it's worth digging around. Some of these are just straight up nonsense. Hopefully one of these will tell us, John, please subscribe. Um, otherwise, I'm just a fraud. Oh, here it is. Please subscribe. It it looks like it missed the John prefix. That's kind of odd. Is it present anywhere else? No, that's the only one. We could determine, okay, what value was that? Like what index did we get that from? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I think that's 24. If I had a, a good count, I might not have. Let's run vuln uh, percent 24 dollar sign s. Yeah, there it is right there. Okay. Now that gets a piece, but I wonder, will that work on the actual b uh, remote target? Let's try and copy this netcat command. And we know, let's use percent 24 dollar sign s. Mmm. Looks like it's missing the Pico prefix at the very, very start, but we can tell that is the flag here, at the very end of it, leaking a flag off the stack, 0551082C. Very cool. I dig that. I like that a lot. That is the bare bone basics and beginnings of a format string exploit. Obviously, all we did was climb up the stack and leak as much data as we could, but this could be weaponized to do so much more. As I mentioned, hey, the percent %n format specifier can actually be used to write data, and you could put together one like bullet of a payload that will determine, hey, where and how do I want to write some data and what data do I want to write, and then you might be able to do just as much damage as you would have with the buffer overflow, hopping around to different things, uh, performing whatever you might really want there. It can do wild and crazy stuff, uh, but for now, we've kind of touched the basics of it. With that said, let's go ahead and, I don't know, make a get flag script. I don't even, it's a dynamic instance, so it's not going to work all that well. Let's just go ahead and echo pico that to flag.text and call that done. I think we did enough bumping around for the time being. Uh, we may very well have learned something fundamental that we could expand upon in a later video, but for now, let's just keep on cruising because I think there was still some good stuff to learn from. Yeah. Alrighty, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you enjoyed some of that new knowledge, some of that new insights, and hopefully it teased you and kind of whet your appetite for more of the damage that could be done with format strings. But there's plenty of education, format uh, resources, and material out there on format strings. Uh, I am just one voice in the ether, but I still hope you got some value out of it, and we'll get into even more in the later videos. If you are liking these videos and you are learning something new, despite me being just one voice in the ether, Please do all those YouTube algorithm things, like, comment, subscribe, anything that helps the channel grow, get free education and more knowledge to more people. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I love you. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.